This week I'm gonna share with you how I found eight different species of snakes and in what types of habitats. And I found all of these within the last few weeks inside of a two mile radius of my suburban home. I'm gonna show you how to find snakes. And I'm catering this video towards novices and to parents wanting to teach their kids about finding snakes safely, but having fun while doing it. Yeah. And yes, this is a bookstore. Plus, at the end of this video, I'll share the funny yet very painful experience I had while filming this video for you. <laughs> the first step in finding snakes is actually learning about them. That's why I've come to this used bookstore, picked up this book for $8. This is actually a complete guide of herpetofauna, and herpetofauna is just a word that includes all reptiles and amphibians of a region. So knowledge is power and the first thing we want to do because we want to learn the venomous snakes in our area for safety reasons, right? Yeah! All right, let's go find some snakes. I'm very familiar with the snakes where I live. I've been a casual herper for over 30 years and a bit more hardcore of a herper here in Virginia during the last few years. And a herper is just someone who goes out looking for amphibians and reptiles and you don't need a fancy degree to be a herper. You just need the willpower to go outside and go do it. The most important rule when you're dealing with snakes, or really any animal, is if you don't know what it is, don't touch it and don't get too close to it. And if you don't want to buy a field guide at your nearby used bookstore or off Amazon, then your local government's game and wildlife department should have a website offering you free information on the snakes in your area, especially the venomous ones, and most states will have herpetological societies that have websites offering free identification sources. Those are simple Google searches to find. You can also use iNaturalist for free at iNaturalist.org to see what species live around you. You don't even need to set up a free account. Just click explore, type in your location. I'll put in San Francisco, California just for an example. Then type in serpentes or snakes to find all snakes seen in the area. By clicking species, you'll be able to see exactly what species have been observed in that area and you can investigate further. The next step is actually, for safety, getting tools. This is a snake hook. This right here is a 43 inch snake hook, stainless steel. Cost me about 50 bucks, but you can get lower ones. LP, you wanna show me that snake hook you have? Sure. This is a smaller one and it's only about 18 bucks. And if you don't wanna get a snake hook, Go around the house and just get a hammer or a golf club is actually great because you want to use that when you're pulling up logs and stuff. It's important to teach this to kids early because there are not just venomous snakes you want to look after, but there are also around here black widows and other things that you might want, not want to get your hands on. So yes, a snake hook looks a lot like a fish gaff, but we do not use these to uh, hurt snakes. We do not stab them or whack snakes with these. We primarily use snake hooks to move vegetation, lift over logs, uh, move things while we examine the environment. We also use them to safely handle snakes for not just the snake safety, but our safety. I'm not teaching you how to use a snake hook in this video or ha how to handle snakes, period. And you definitely don't want to handle venomous snakes if you don't have the proper experience even if you went out and bought a snake hook. It might give you a lot of confidence, but trust me, you do not want to get bit by a dangerous venomous snake. And also keep in mind that I actually don't use my snake hook that often. And you'll see me in this video using my bare hands a lot. And that is a risk that I'm taking, that I'm willing to take, but I can't ethically recommend to anyone, especially new herpers, to go out without a golf club or a snake hook and go stick your hands under logs and rocks and whatnot. Ground-dwelling hymenopterans like harvester ants and wasps are also a concern when you are out herping. The eastern yellow jacket is an animal around me that packs a really nasty sting and likes to nest in areas where we often look for snakes. Bring an EpiPen just in case because when you're lifting up logs, it can happen. Yeah, and when, when you need to run when you see them. Like, for real, you can't play around. For real, for real, run. For real, run. 
Now that you've done your research to discover the dangerous to human venomous snakes in your area, and I say dangerous to humans because there are certain snakes like garter snakes that technically are venomous, but they're not really dangerous to humans. You have your tool, uh, I have a snake hook, you can get your golf club, you are ready to go find some snakes. Let's see how I found the snakes in my area. Different species of snakes will occupy different ecological niches. That means that they will have different behaviors like feeding, resting, and mating, and they'll occupy different habitat types. Which is not to say that you won't find different species in the same area, but there are definitely habitat types that are preferred more by certain species than by others. Also, depending on where you live, snakes might hibernate for a good portion of the year when it is too cold. Snakes are very picky about their thermoregulation, as they are very dependent on the temperature of their environment to determine how they go about their lives. Just like you put on a coat during winter to stay warm, a snake often goes underground or into dense cover until the weather warms up. Let's start with how I find water snakes. Just from the name, we can glean that this snake probably lives near water, and that is very, very true. This is a northern water snake in the genus Nerodia, and snakes of this genus are all over the eastern half of the United States. These are perhaps the easiest snake type to find because they are ubiquitous around water sources as they are dependent on this water habitat type. Adults primarily feed on fishes as well as other small animals like frogs. I find them all the time basking on stones near creeks, lakes, and ponds. The northern water snake is an excellent swimmer and can hold its breath up to an hour if need be. I also sometimes find water snakes away from water, but usually not too far away. As you can see, they are pretty fast on land too. Water snakes are a toss-up for holding. It depends on the personality of the snake and how you approach them. Sometimes they bite vigorously and, you know, I've dealt with some docile ones that will let you hold them. Water snakes technically are venomous, for venom is a modified saliva that comes from a certain gland. They don't have fangs and so it doesn't inject into you. They have to grind on you and gnaw in the venom, but they're not a danger to humans. Some snakes are primarily diurnal which means they're active during the daytime, and some are primarily nocturnal, or active at night, and sometimes that will change seasonally. This eastern copperhead is a dangerous, venomous snake that hibernates over winter here in Virginia. After leaving its hibernaculum, the snake will be more active during the day in the late spring and late fall when it needs the warmth of the day sunlight, but during the summer when the nights are warmer, it has more nocturnal habits. Copperhead snakes are actually very commonly found under and around human dwellings in suburban and rural areas because they love to take advantage of human structures like sheds and houses that not only provide that actual shelter, but they also attract prey sources that also like that shelter, like small rodents. Heavy rains will sometimes cause snakes to be a bit more active and move around, and that holds true with copperheads. So after a rainstorm, I like to go out looking for snakes. I found this copperhead only a couple of feet away from a northern water snake and some south facing rocks. And I find copperheads during the day that are basking under thick vegetation, or sometimes on top of it like this juvenile. Copperheads will not normally strike unless they are provoked. So especially if you're a noob teaching your kids, the best thing to teach them is to actually observe from a distance, admire the beauty, and just respect that beautiful animal. Decay's brown snake has often been regarded as a secretive snake. They are sometimes a rarity to find, although I've actually found quite a few this year. I met a fellow herper in the woods a few weeks back, and she asked me to make a video on how to find the Decay's brown snake. So Vanessa, this video is actually inspired by your question, and I'm going to do my best to answer that right here. With the Decay's brown snake, we must remember that they are primarily nocturnal. They like being out at night, and they are small, barely bigger than a foot which makes it a bit harder to find them. But if we think about their diet, which is mostly earthworms and slugs, we can think of some good habitats that they would like. Slugs and worms are quite often found in moist areas and soil. I found this brown snake by moving a giant log 
that was between a canal and a river above very semi-saturated soil. In this decays I found by peeling back the bark on a fallen tree that was actually hovering above a flood plain alongside a creek. I found two decays underneath a rotten log right on the transition of a wetland and a woodland. And this one I actually heard slithering in some vegetation near some vernal pools during the day. So the commonality with all the decays I've ever found, they're always near semi-saturated soil. So uh, bog, wetland, um, swamp, these are good places to be looking. I would also suggest checking gardens. Gardens around homes are great habitat types for this small snake type. And decays brown snake can also be found in trash piles and other human disturbed habitats. It's a very docile snake and it usually won't bite when handled. So indeed nature is nifty and we want to do our best to preserve it while we're out herping. When we're looking for snakes sometimes we destroy habitat. Like when I peel back the bark on a log. I try to minimize the destruction that I do because animals rely on those places to hide and survive. So if I ruin a hiding spot, I try to restore it or even create another one. Part of being a responsible herper is making sure that we do what we can to make sure native species can thrive. And apparently LP thinks part of herping is also rolling down hills. Little rocks is a good spot. This is an eastern worm snake. And these, this is an adult. They don't get much bigger than this. These are safe to hold. LP, would you like to hold one? Sure. Okay, two hands. Two hands and you gotta, you don't wanna drop it, remember? It's not gonna bite you. It's like a, I'll hold part of it. Oh, cute. Yeah. Give me it all. Now these do release, release a musk, which smells really bad. But this one's actually not surprised right now, and it's not releasing the musk. So we'll put it back. Very cute. And now, this is another lesson I want to teach right now, is when you're restoring the habitat, don't crush the snake when you're putting it back. So yeah. I'm going to make sure that this snake is not underneath the rock when I'm putting it back. I'm not crushing it. And it will find its way back in there, and I'll cover it up even more. So it's not being seen by a predator. The eastern worm snake is a very cute little snake to find. I normally don't find these under rocks like I did today. When I want to find these, I look for logs that are very rotten and old stumps with that reddish color because I know it's soft. This snake has tunnel systems set up in the ground and within rotting logs that it can quickly escape into. Sometimes it takes a lot of work to retrieve one. Look at that. There's an eastern worm snake. It's just burrowed. There it is. So that was a lot of work to find one snake. Which of course is an eastern worm snake. There are many species of garter snakes across North America. This is the eastern garter snake and the official snake of Virginia. Garter snakes are types of snakes that you are more likely to find out and about during the day in the warmer months. They inhabit so many habitat types that it's hard not to find one if you're out looking for snakes. They are often seen just on bike paths or hiking trails, like this one Galen Mook found earlier this year that was eating a frog right on a path. They usually have at least one nearby water source, and I have found them under logs in the early spring and out basking on rocks and wood piles in the late spring and early fall. Garter snakes can be a bit aggressive, and they're more prone to strike without little prompt. When I was a boy in Colorado, like before the age of five, garter snakes are actually the snakes I learned how to pick up snakes, and I just remember they'd bite me and bite me and bite me until I figured out, you know, there are better ways to hold an agitated snake. And yes, they're technically venomous snakes, but 
not a danger to humans except for the discomfort that comes just from something biting you. And water habitats are not just great for finding water snakes. Many species can be found near lakes, ponds, creeks, and rivers because snakes do need to drink water occasionally and sometimes they even need to go for a soak. And these habitats often attract their prey items like small rodents, toads, and birds. And the eastern rat snake is a diurnal and nocturnal hunter and it's usually very active just after sunset. You will often find these out during the day and this is one of the most common snakes to find in the region where I'm at. They're often found where there are trees like hardwood forests and urban wooded areas. It's also quite common to find rat snakes coiled up at about head height in small trees and shrubs, so look above ground too. Adults are mostly all black and quite large, so they are pretty easy to spot. Sometimes they are docile and sometimes they are very aggressive. You okay? You okay? What are you coming at me for? Dude. You also find a lot of tree snakes in trees, which just makes sense, like water snakes, water, tree snakes, trees. South facing stones are usually a great spot you'll find uh, snakes sunning and I have found numerous black racers over here. The northern black racer is a snake that also has diurnal habits. I find these quite often out in the open during the day in wooded meadows, hardwood forests, and transition habitats. I've learned from multiple encounters that they have no problem coming right at you if their known hiding place is nearest to you. Again, this is a snake that can be picked up depending on how you approach it, uh, but more than likely, unless you approach it the right way and grab it the right way with experience, they will try and bite you repeatedly, which is sort of like a thorny bush kind of. <laughs> That's just how it is. So a spot like this, you get a lot of loose wood. Uh, and it's in the shade too, it's not going to get much sun, so I'd say you can find a worm snake under here, a decays, a garter, even a, a ring neck snake or something. And look at that, we have ourselves the northern ring neck snake, which of course is a beautiful little species. They don't get that big, they're okay to pick up, but they can release a foul musk. I tell you what, up here in Northern Virginia, we really only get this one. This is the subspecies at Uh The intergrades show up more south and west. Back to handling snakes in general, the number one rule in herping. I hope you memorize this, because this is the one thing I want you to take away from this video. If you aren't 100% sure what snake you are looking at, you definitely don't go touch it. It's just how it's got to be. And I'm sorry if it feels like I'm being an <gasps> when I say it, but your safety is important to me. Especially safety of little ones. And just because a snake is small does not mean it's not dangerous and venomous. This juvenile copperhead that I found the other day is born with fangs and venom, and it's quite potent. And it's about the same size as an adult decays brown snake. So, small does not mean it's safe. And the second thing I want to go over real quick, bestow some wisdom from experience on you is, I see this a lot when children and sometimes adults aren't confident, they're scared when they go to pick up an animal, be it a snake, a frog, anything. And they end up throwing or dropping that animal and killing it or damaging it to the point where it needs to be killed to be put out of its misery. So as parents, I know you want to teach your kids how to hold them, so there are ways to do that. You keep the animal low to the ground at the start. If, say you're holding the toad, keep it low to the ground so if it jumps off, it's not going to hurt itself. Same thing with the little snakes. Keep it low to the ground uh, until that confidence is built up. Because here at Team Koa, we, we respect nature and we enjoy the outdoors, and so we want to make sure that we don't have to needlessly kill things, right? So the uh, painful yet funny thing that happened, I was telling Caesar, you know, I had, I had planned out this video and I was like, we're going to have to talk about yellow jackets because that's quite a possibility when you're lifting up rotten logs. Sure enough, 
LPs right next to me were pulling up a log. I felt the sting before I heard or even saw the yellow jackets. I immediately recognized that sensation. I told LP to run. She took off. You need to run when you see them. Like, for real. I stood my ground to attract them. And let me tell you, that is a weird feeling, that knowing that you have to stand your ground and attract yellow jackets so they don't chase your little niece. Fortunately, she got away without a single sting. Her uncle Caesar was able to pull off the one on her. He took that sting. I don't, I don't know how many stings I got. I, I, this hand got seven alone, my leg, my side. <laughs> they went in my pants, let's just say that. You know, that wasn't the first yellow jacket nest I pulled up, and it certainly will not be the last. I wish you the best of luck finding snakes. I do not wish these nosy crows, nosy, noisy crows, the best of luck being noisy. Oh my goodness. Probably heard them the whole video. Spread some knowledge. Be nature heroic.